Hello one, and today we're taking a look at Grasshopper again. So we're having those buildings here and we can basically adjust the roof height. Then we can also can adjust the height in general of the buildings. And then we can increase or decrease the size of some rectangles. And then we can also increase and decrease the amount. As well, we can put the pole lines that we import directly from the geometry. We can move it around and we can also flip each of those pole lines as we wish. So the roof is right side up. So anyway, um, we're going to now I'm going to show you now the video or like we're going to go through the process of how to create those kind of things. So first of all, I'm going to go back to the wireframe view and uh, we're going to create a new uh, Rhino file, a uh, renew grasshopper file. So here we basically create a few rectangles. We just simply do this by uh, in the Rhino viewport with rectangle and we just create a rectangle like this or here another one and another one here. Now we go back to the grasshopper viewport and we're going to right, uh, import a geometry with double click geometry and then right click set multiple geometries and set those geometries here but only set um, the basic pole like like closed pole lines and the, it would be very good if those pole lines would be rectangular as well. Furthermore, now we have those imported and we also want to create um, one specific uh, rectangle uh, that's going to be housing a bunch of houses so that they're going to be a lot of them uh, in the area. So we're going to create this as well by just creating a bigger rectangle, right click again, set one geometry and put this here. Now we have the geometry already set up of those ones, that, that are those individual rectangles and we're simply going to extrude them upwards so we're gonna do this by by using the extrude command and it wants to have a direction and the base the base will be clear like this and um, now we also need to set a direction so we double click and put a z command in here and then we're gonna put in um, a, a number slider we just put in 11.0 and now we have um, a z vector into that direction and as you see it will have has the base shape, shape already so that's pretty good um, and now we also want to populate those uh, things that we have here and that those will be visible as well to us so we're gonna use the populate 2d and we're gonna use the region of the bigger rectangle that we imported from here and then we're gonna also um, have a custom count amount that's gonna be here and then we're gonna use a rectangle that will be applied to uh, each of the population points and we're gonna give it two number sliders as well um, maybe like that and just copy it and now we have where we just make them a rectangular like this and now we have those already created Okay, let's hide this for now and let's uh, middle click mouse button and disable the preview. Um, well, maybe I okay, can make this one here and we can also now, we need, what we need to do as well is we need to merge this list with that list so they're both going to be extruded in the same way. So we're going to use the command merge, Oppa. merge and we use the data one, data two set and we're going to put them both in here and just for good measures actually in this case we're actually going to uh, flatten uh, it as well um, with right click okay now we have our basic um, things defined now we need to basically move up the rectangles on the same height as we have them here and then we need to pick two of those lengths and put a middle point and move it upwards we're gonna use this, you do this by just have the move command and take the base geometry of the uh, rectangles that we have here. And then we use the motion that we define for the extrusion 
of those rectangles. So as you see now, we have them all basically in the upward position here. Next, we're gonna use the explode command. And this will basically, um, will make of the other one rectangle, it will make four segments of this rectangle as well with some points around it. However, we all need to have the segments. And from those segments, we all need to collect the first one, uh, like the first one, or if you yeah the first one and the third one so it's gonna it's gonna be like the first one is like here second one is here third one is here and fourth one is here so we need to collect only the first one and the fourth one but uh, we're gonna collect this by using the list commands a list item and we're gonna input a zero and as well a two because the list basically starts at zero then it goes to one, two, three, four. Just sorry it quickly with here. If we just put a panel in here, you see it's the first one is zero, one, two, three. So we're going to use this list that we have here, and we're gonna duplicate it. And one time we're gonna use it uh, from here and the other one there. So right now you see we have it them nice and evenly distributed, like this one here and that other one over there. Okay, we're gonna go hide those two little ones here in the last. And now we need to define um, a middle point of those curves. Are we gonna, yeah, a middle point of those curves, and then we're gonna move this point upwards. So we're gonna, we can use it by uh, use point on curve, and we get actually could, uh, you know, I think we do it like this. Yeah. We're gonna use point on curve, and you see it creates this middle point here, and then we're gonna use another one. And it's gonna be like right there and now we're gonna use it we're gonna move it upwards into the uh, Z direction and we're going to use the point here and we're gonna create another Z axis and with like 1.1 maybe right in here duplicate that and we have then the other points this is C it's gonna create our roof like that. Now we need to basically put those, stitch those two points together by um, uh, by just star point and end point. And we also can create, yeah, and now we also need to create the surface that will be created between those two things. So we're gonna use the root surface commands which is then used for this. And we also need to basically take the lines that we have that is corresponding to that because we don't want to have this line um, uh, combined with this one, but we want to have it uh, on that line over there. So we're going on to basically um, copy those and then we're gonna use a like one, wait, so one panel, and we're also going to use a three panel because that will be the curves that we want to uh, extract from here. So now that we have those, we basically have to create uh, the curves. So this will be with that curve here, that curve there, and that curve here, and the curve there. And as you see right now with this curve, this kind of doesn't really work that way. So we actually need to flip this curve um, for that matter. Or we can also just, yeah, no, I think we're just gonna flip the curve for now. So we can flip the curve here. And now this will actually have them all nice and evenly. If you take a look, yeah, okay. So now we have our roof defined. However, you see the roof is still kind of hollow there in the middle. So let's focus on that part. What we need to do there is basically we would need to have the point that we defined in the beginning, like this one here. Uh, no, we move the direction upwards, this point here, and we need to use the extrude point commands here. Oh, I cannot write. It's under surface preform extrude point or just extrude point and we need to have the base of this one so the base will be let me actually take a look that will not be that one 
Got a little bit confused here. Ah, yeah. So this would probably uh, be that one here. So we need to actually make two of those um, because one would be at one side, the other one would be the other side. So we're gonna create this one here and take it as a base, and then move this one as the top. Um, ah, no. We need to take the extruded points. And as you see, it creates our nice, nice surface. However, the other side isn't done yet, so we need to do the same for the other side. Here as the base, and here as the point that's going to be extruded too. Okay, now it looks like we already have everything we need for our uh, small um, roofs and our small things. And we are just also going to give it color as well. And we're also gonna take a look at geometry pipeline as well, but first let's define the color. So we're gonna use the color picker. Gonna, yeah, that's fine. And we're also gonna use the custom preview. And with that we're gonna create uh, the surface. So the surface gonna, it's gonna just go in here, all of it. With shift click you just join them basically together. You can also do it with merge first and then put them together. But this, uh, in that case, it works um, still. Okay, now it is defined like that and we also need to flatten it as well. So it will be applied to everything and we also need to put the base extrusion in there as well. Okay, now that we have that set up, uh, we can actually go to the render view and uh, we're gonna disable all the other things that we created with middle to mouse click disable preview and we're also gonna create a surface or a rectangle that will be as a like a like a round shadow so it's gonna be like shading quite nicely uh, down there on top and the good thing now is for example if you want to um, move this curve like over there as you see it, it still takes all the properties that you want to have from from grasshopper and it still applies them to those things even if you rotate it opa, if you rotate it around it will still be uh, having the same things and the good thing is well if you just type in flip you see it changes the direction of the roof as well so this is going to be pretty useful um, for your um, if you want to change the, the the roofs at a certain angle like this should be maybe that way I guess so just like you know just uh, uh, space and this and you can very easily adjust it uh, to your liking and if you want to have this like bigger amount here to be adjusted as well you can um, just create more of those or less of those as well like this Okay, now we also, for example, if you want to um, import more of those things, we can, and you don't, for example, for a create a rectangle now, you see it will not be put in there as well. So one thing to counter this is actually use, you can use custom, no, it's going to be a geometry pipeline like this. And it's basically, it, it always re-imports the geometry that you want to have from Rhino into the Grasshopper environment. So you can, we can, for example, we can create a new layer and this layer will be like roofs, let's say, like just roof. And we put this thing on that layer as well, give it some color. And every time we are on this layer, obviously we, we can create those things. But now we have to import it every time separately like this, right click, set multiple geometry, blah, blah, blah. And um, if I select the wrong geometry, I would have a problem. So I can do this by a geometry pipeline and I can just simply like double click this here. We can use the layer roof that we just defined and it will now just, um, and we now click also the, uh, double click on this one here and as you see they also got highlighted this will be like four lines this is four points this is for uh, b reps or surfaces and this is for meshes so like the four basic geometries and you see if i will move it around like this here um, it will be as well in the ryan geometry furthermore we're gonna just add it to the uh, merge thing like here and if we just create new houses it will automatically 
put those houses in our geometry without any problems whatsoever. So that's basically it. Um, I hope this helped you. It's very useful for uh, making very like long tasks that take a lot of time to create. Uh, very easy and useful. So um, yeah, if you wanna have, if you wanna, if you have a problem with some of your design processes and there is something you want to automate and make it more uh, streamlined, and you have some kind of like basic idea of it, which would be straightforward or you have like an image of some kind of sort please let me know and i could actually make a video about it so uh, it can help you and also other people in the community as well so thank you very much for watching and good luck see you in the next one